Hello, welcome to another episode on scriptural studies. This time, we'll be focusing on the parables of the Lord Jesus Christ, with a special focus on the Sower's parable, where we'll be unveiling the four kinds of spiritual hearing and understanding, and how each of them impacts our journey in Christ. All right, so let's dive into it. So for this study, we'll be using these two applications in order to engage in our study. We'll be using the Eastward Bible. I talked about this in our scriptural study, the part one of it. You can watch about the various apps you can use for your scriptural study. And then we'll be using the Gateway Bible because each of these you can find on your either Play Store or your iOS store as well. So ensure you get them in order for you to be able to follow up with each of these study. All right, so let's go into it. We're taking a focus from Matthew 13 using the expanded version Bible, EXP. All right, from verse 3. Then Jesus used story to teach them many things. He said, a farmer went out to plant his seed while he was planting some events occurred for our lesson in the parable of the sower jesus illustrates four types of soil as engaged by a farmer while sowing his seeds let's take a look at them first we have the seeds which fell by the roadside soil some seed fell by the roadside or what you say along the path and the birds came and ate it all up all right then we have the second one seeds which fell on rocky soil that is some seed fell on rocky ground where there wasn't much dirt that seed grew or sprang up very fast because the ground was not deep but when the sun arose and the plants dried up, they were scorched and withered by the sun because they didn't have deep roots. All right? So something happened. We'll find out about that later. Then we have the third soil, which is the thorny weed soil. Some other seed fell among thorny weeds, which grew and choked the good plants. All right, we'll find out what are these weeds that grew and choked the good plants. All right, then we have the fourth seed, which is the good soil, where it grew, produced a crop green. Some plants made a hundred times more, some made a sixty times more, and some made thirty times more. All right, each of these will look in much more details when we dive into it. All right, so then his conversation went on where he now went further to begin to explain the parables to them but before them he said let those with ears use them and listen that means the one who has ear to hear let him hear so this was a parable that was being spoken to the public he was speaking to a crowd if you start reading from verse 1 you will find out he was speaking to the crowd okay then verse 10 now says the followers the disciples of jesus came to him and asked why do you use stories to teach the people or speak to them in parables okay this raises a very important question for his disciples now remember jesus was speaking to the crowd about this story which are of course the people of Israel who were given the scriptures, which is Moses and the prophets to read, hear and understand. So as a people giving so much wealth of spiritual wisdom and knowledge, you would expect them to understand his stories. But he gave the reason why he spoke in stories to them instead of in plain terms. Why? Because stories are used as a medium of revealing truths to people of low understanding or infants in upbringing 
because stories contain similitudes, figures, metaphors, fictions, like movies, all right? Now, if you remember in understanding of scriptures, we talked about this figure of speech. You can dive into that video in order for you to be able to understand these similitudes, figure of speech, metaphors, and all that. We did a deep study on that. So you will be able to understand quickly what is happening in this story after you have listened to that clip. Okay? So endeavor to listen to it. So let's continue. So Jesus then answered in verse 11 and said, You have been chosen, or it has been granted and given to you to know and understand the secrets which he called mysteries about the kingdom of heaven. But others cannot know these secrets. That means it has not been given or granted to others to know and understand these secrets of the kingdom. So the master begins to introduce the discourse that is, this is about the kingdom of heaven and knowing and understanding the secret of this kingdom. All right. This is what this parable is about. But he's speaking to the crowd. To the crowd, they think he's talking about a farmer and some seeds. But he's telling his disciples, this parable is about the secret of the kingdom of heaven. Okay. All right. So let's dive into it to understand what it means by this secret or mysteries. So what are mysteries? Mysteries are those truths which have been hidden from all ages in the past and revealed in the New Testament. Okay, this is a special quote from Mark Otto. Okay, in 1148. All right. So, what this means is that the ultimate revelation of all mysteries are known in the New Testament, which occurs between the new relationship between God and man. That is what we call the New Testament. The New Testament is not a book. The New Testament is a relationship between God and man, okay? which is the relationship of the father and his children. The father's secrets are ultimately known and understood by his children in the New Testament. Okay, so, but let's look at it contextually and find out using the Greek word, that Christ used here that is called mysteries, all right? The word mysteries here comes from a Greek word, mysterion, which means a hidden truth, a hidden thing, a hidden purpose, a hidden will, a hidden counsel, or a hidden secret, which could either be of God or of man, only confined to the initiated few, that is, a matter or thing that belongs only to a certain group or club of individuals which they keep as a secret amongst themselves even though in plain sight it will not be obvious to the understanding of others and you can find this everywhere that is why this is about uh, a family okay ultimately this is about a family the kingdom the father and his children this secret is a family secret, all right? And you'll find this in several places as well. Either of men, which you find in organizations and various clubs and various groups, all right? So, but this hidden secret or truth can be seen in sayings or in images, which include visions and dreams, okay? This you will find all over the Old Testament, okay? Like for instance, the one that Christ is presenting here about the parable of the sower, these ones are in sayings, but he's painting a picture, a mental picture about a farmer who goes to a farm to sow a seed and what happened along the way. All right. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what he called the kingdom of heaven. Okay. We'll look at this in a more broader times, but Let's take a look at it briefly over here. So what is the kingdom of heaven? The word kingdom comes from a Greek word, basilia, which means royal power and dominion over a territory. 
from the word the king's dominion right the word heaven comes from a greek word oranos which means the sky the expanse with all things visible in it and it can also mean the spiritual sky all right which is the spiritual expanse fair of order of things eternal and consummately perfect where god rules from alongside with other spiritual beings which is you find like angels and other beings as well all right so what this means is that when you look at the physical expanse sky it gives you the understanding of the spiritual expanse operation we will break this down in more details and simplicity in another video where we will talk about the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven Okay, we'll be able to differentiate this and explain this in context and in full details all right so since christ the lord is speaking about secrets and dominion is dealing with spiritual dominion and knowing its secret effects over a territory but in this context he shows us this king's spiritual expanse dominion and alongside his other spiritual beings like angels and others is over these four kinds of understanding or territories all right so now that we understand this is about knowing and understanding the hidden truths of the spiritual expanse dominion and order of the king over all kinds of territory let's see what he says further about this so in verse 12 he now say those who have understanding will be given more and they will have all they need that means they will have abundance of understanding but those who do not have understanding even what they have will be taken away from them what then he knows what he's saying that's because of course he is speaking from the scriptures that those who have spiritual understanding of the hidden truths which he called mysteries about the king's spiritual dominion over territories or how the king influences territory will be given more how and why does this happen okay let's check from the scriptures from proverbs 1 from verse 5 shows that this spiritual principle or truth that a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel what does this mean so the one who has spiritual understanding is a wise man and he will have spiritual understanding in overflowing measure but the one who doesn't have spiritual understanding even what he have will be taken away from them so the question is how will the little or even the little understanding that they have be taken away from them which means spiritual secrets came to the one who doesn't have since he doesn't have spiritual understanding it was taken away from them all right so how and by whom okay how was it taken away and who took it let's find out in verse 13 he said this is why i use stories to teach the people and speak in parables because they see or look but they do not really see or perceive they hear but they do not really hear or understand it is amazing how the lord answers questions in all his teaching by first giving us the full foundational background and secondly building the framework and finally finish the rooftop by answering the question so the lord doesn't just answer your question directly he will pull it out 
with a story and drive you within a context so the questions are not yes or no answer no the way he answers questions are in details so what's he saying so he's saying the reason for speaking in stories is because he's communicating heavenly dominion secrets which is given only to a selected group to understand why because they are spiritual truths that will require you to be a wise man a man who acknowledges god in his understanding to know and to understand these truths okay for the understanding is in overflowing measure it will increase where truth is appreciated understood and wisely used all right all right all of this means they can't see spiritually neither understand things spiritually and even when they look at the images presented to them they don't really see or perceive them spiritually they understand these images in natural plain terms not knowing that these are similitudes metaphors synodic antithesis personification and other figures of speech that contains truths facts and lessons now in the same way they look and hear spiritual instructions of the lord and they do not really hear spiritually or understand them spiritually this is the reason why he speaks in parable and you will find a lot of this in all the writings of the prophets all right all the writings of the prophets including even the saints and the image paintings of jesus that he presents in his various lectures okay so in verse 14 he now said so they show the things isaiah said about them are true which means in them the prophecy of isaiah is fulfilled which says you will listen and listen keep on hearing or listen intensely but you will not understand can you imagine that <laughs> you will look and look and keep seeing and keep looking intently but you will not learn spiritually perceive or comprehend can you imagine reading and looking at the scripture and yet you don't see the spiritual significance of it that is what is happening in our world and has been happening in several generations people have been reading and been looking at the scripture naturally they look at it and they say oh these are just stories yes they are stories that's what the lord is saying this is the reason why the entire scriptures are presented in stories why because they are secrets they are secrets all right so isaiah now said for the minds and the hearts of these people have become stubborn you see this is the reason why you can understand your hearts have become dull callous and hardened all right they do not hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears but they might really understand in their mind with their hearts and come back that means they will turn and return to the lord and he will heal them but because they are callous in their hearts and they have hardened themselves they are only looking with their natural eyes they wouldn't see so when people see with their spiritual eyes and hear with their spiritual ears or perceptions they will understand in their mind and it will make them to turn back to the lord which means they will be healed all right what this means is that stop looking at the scriptures as stories they are beyond stories they are the, about the kingdom of god that are spoken in figures of speech okay we talked about this understanding the scriptures is very very essential you listen to those clips on understanding the scriptures the scriptures are not just stories yes they are presented in stories form and we said the reason is because they are being given to people who are infants spiritually who have low understanding spiritually 
or who doesn't even understand spiritual things at all all right so that is why for instance when you read about the children of israelites crossing the red sea there are spiritual secrets hidden in that story that was written down for you okay there are several stories in the entire scriptures you read about the stories of david of daniel of several of the prophets and various righteous men in the scriptures okay these things are written as stories but they contain truths about the kingdom of god all right so what does it mean by you will be healed the word you will be healed comes from a greek word oima which means to be cured make whole or free from error like being free from a disease or sickness so in this context they will be free from spiritual errors because they now spiritually understand truths and perceive god's word beyond the natural senses or the stories being presented to them all right so let's go further and see what he said so he turned to his disciples and said in verse 16 but you are blessed because you see with your eyes and hear with your ears i tell you the truth many prophets good and righteous and just men wanted and longed to see the things that you now see but they did not see them and they wanted and longed to hear the things that you now hear but they did not hear them okay so he said they are blessed which comes from a greek word that means makarios which means to be well off to be fortunate to be set apart from others because you see with your eyes and you hear with your ears you are blessed meaning they have the fortune or ability to understand and perceive the words the speech the images spiritually okay for many people and prophets righteous people and prophets of the old testament desired and longed to see the things that they are seeing with him at that time and what they are hearing at that time even up to this time and generation because this applies to all generations okay because you are dealing with spiritual understanding spiritual understanding cuts across all generations okay what this means is that so this statement here and parable deals with people and beings of all generation because it relates to the spiritual knowledge and understanding because he said it involves righteous and men and prophets of the past the people listening to him and his disciples and we today are not just his children but his disciples under his training for a disciple means a student and he the lord is our teacher and we are his students all right so let's dive in and see the four kinds of soil planting that he introduced in this story in order to be able to share with us the four kinds of understanding that happens with various men in our world all right now if you have been following gradually you would have noticed that he has been using the word hearing and seeing okay and understanding so what that tells you is that the context of this story is dealing with what topic understanding this kind of soil planting of seeds are what he reveals as the four kinds of hearing perception or understanding okay that is ruled by the kingdom of heaven okay alongside with the effects and productivity from each one of them so this is about the working effect of the hidden secrets of the spiritual dominion of his expanse Okay, that determines our eternal living order, which he simply calls the kingdom of heaven. In other words, the working effect of the dominion of the Lord in a man's understanding that is evident in his living is what he is revealing in these four kinds of soil planting. 
okay so let's go the lord jesus begins to explain the seed sowing story after his disciples previously asked him why he spoke in parables to the crowd okay and he spoke to them in plain terms okay so in verse 18 he says so listen to the meaning of that story about the farmer which is the parable of the sower what is the seed that fell by the road or along the path that seed is like the person or anyone who hears the message the word or teaching about the kingdom but doesn't understand it the evil one comes and takes away or snatches what was planted or sown in that person's heart so we can see here that the master teacher is using a figure of speech called simile okay we took a look at this briefly in our scriptural study and we explain in details what simile are okay but we'll still explain it over here a simile is a figure of speech that directly compares two things simile by highlights uses words such as like as so and then okay all right the comparison between two things all right so the seed planting hearing is like a person that hears the message that is the word or the teaching about the kingdom okay and he doesn't understand okay in order for us to be able to understand what it means by the word or the teaching about the kingdom we take a look at the greek word that is used for word here which is logos okay it comes from the greek word logos which means the idea the thoughts the teaching and intelligence what this means is that when a person hears god's word they are hearing god's idea they are hearing his thoughts they are listening to his teachings or they are listening to his intelligence okay we'll talk about this more in other clips where we deal with who is god and what is god who is man and what is man okay watch out for that episode of scriptural study okay so this person hears the king's intelligence okay that engages the king's dominion but he doesn't understand it so the evil one or the wicked one comes immediately and takes away what was planted in that person's heart this is what he means when he said previously the one who doesn't have understanding if you remember he said even the little he has will be taken away from him why because the wicked will come for his heart which means spiritual secrets came to this one who doesn't have they came to him how did they come to him they came to him in the stories that he had for instance like the crowd that heard about the story of the sower the secret came to them okay but it came to them in parables and since they didn't understand or he didn't understand or didn't have spiritual understanding it was taken away from him so the question would be how and by whom he said in his parables the birds he said the birds came and picked up the seeds and ate them all right so but here he's explaining to us and he's telling us these birds is called the wicked one and how does the wicked one operate the wicked one operates by wickedness the only thing that comes out from the wicked one is wickedness and what is wickedness wickedness are evil deceptive harmful malicious rebellious and grievous thoughts so what is happening here what is happening here is a supplanting or a replacement of intelligence understanding so when god speaks to a man and he doesn't understand what god is saying spiritually the wicked one will introduce his own wicked thoughts to this person to understand what god said 
in a natural way okay in a natural wicked way will means the person will understand it in an evil deceptive harmful malicious rebellious and grievous way that is recognized in the sight of god as evil okay so what does that mean the solution here is to accept god's word with joy okay in order for one to begin the journey of understanding when the word of god comes to someone okay for instance when the lord says you are blessed the first thing that comes to you is to receive those words with joy in your heart okay but it doesn't stop here it doesn't stop there we'll go to the second one and see whether joy alone is enough in order for you to be able to understand what god said to you spiritually okay so in the second parable he now said from verse 20 and what is the seed that fell down on rocky ground that seed is like the person who hears the word okay the teaching and the message which we call intelligence he quickly accepts them okay and receives them with joy okay just like we say receive it with joy okay but he doesn't stop there but he doesn't let the teaching go down deep into his life so since the world has no root in himself he keeps it only a short time the world doesn't endure okay it is short-lived what happens is when trouble and persecution comes because of the teaching he accepted okay the word he accepted that message he accepted he quickly and immediately gives up he falls away gets offended and stumbles so what happened here what happened here is that this person hears the intelligent of god he accepts it with joy in his heart which is good but this person didn't allow god's thoughts to sink deep into him which means he needs to keep patience on god's word after hearing by making it resound over and over in his mind this is what we call meditation okay, when you hear god's word and you receive it with joy it is also essential that you take some time out to meditate on the word to allow it to sink deep into you all right to be grounded inside your heart okay you meditate on the word you make it resound over and over again in your mind so that is not just being joyful for a moment only you will need that commitment to stay real okay otherwise you become a person who is open for alternative than god's word okay what this happen is that you will be open for alternatives okay so why he said so you keep the message in your heart for a short while because trouble and persecution came because of the word you accepted okay so for each word of god a person accepts troubles opposition distressing pressure will come from whom he said from the scorching sun and it will wither okay the scorching sun the scorching sun is what he calls troubles and where do troubles come from troubles opposition and distressing pressures are caused by men they are caused by satanic forces they are caused by the weakness of the environment all right and so when the world hasn't taken roots or settled in you in your understanding you quickly be offended okay that is you begin to destroy distrust god's intelligence because you didn't understand the secret intelligence that was revealed to you from the king's dominion okay that is targeted at influencing your living okay so the solution here is patience why because joy produces patience 
okay patience is a development of meditation it's a product of meditation so you, you might be asking how do i get patient no you get patient by meditating on god's word all right so the king's heavenly influence and dominion has no effect or productivity in this person's spiritual understanding and life because he lingers for alternative okay don't linger for alternative god's word is the final word so but patience is not all there is still more to this all right so let's look at the third parable and see what he says from verse 22 he says what is the seed that fell among the tongue weeds that seed is like the person who hears the teaching the word the message but let worries about this life this world the temptation and the deceitfulness and seduction of wealth stop that teaching from growing that is they choke the word or the message or intelligence that was released to this person okay so the teaching doesn't produce fruits in that person's life so this person hears he accepts god's word with joy and continues which produces patience as he meditates on the word okay but what happened is that in the course of his meditation and staying in patience he allows the worries of this world life that is the world's temptation deceitfulness and seduction of wealth to stop that teaching from growing inside him which means no character is built wherefore the world doesn't produce fruits in that person's life so the understanding of spiritual growth is the issue here that means this person has to grow more okay it doesn't stop with patient this person lacks the understanding of the world to build trustworthy character okay it's not enough to remain in patience he has to build trustworthy character that means so he has the word in his heart but the worries of this world which the lord called the deceitfulness of riches suffocates the world god's intelligence which he accepted about god's dominion and glory so this couldn't produce spiritual understanding to build up the character so what is the solution here the solution here is character building on the hope of glory to stay true to god's word regardless of the worries which are the deceits of riches okay stay true to god's word that means as you're building patience you also build on trustworthy character you build trustworthy character on the hope of glory that the glory that you see in the midst of all the troubles and the temptation okay and the persecution and the tribulations will what the hope of glory triumphs the intelligence of god will triumph over all of these challenges that you are confronted with because the moment you receive the word problems will follow the word and come to you and when they come you will need trustworthy character in order to be able to hold on to the intelligence that is supplied to you from heaven so the king's heavenly dominion has no effect or productivity in this person's spiritual understanding and life because he allowed the worries of deceitful riches to suffocate his understanding okay this is another category so let's look at the fourth category and see what happens so the fourth person he said in verse 23 but what is the seed that fell down on the good ground that seed is like the person who hears the teaching and understands it that person grows produces fruits he produces a crop sometimes a hundred times more 
sometimes 60 times more and sometimes 30 times more praise god so this person hears the king's intelligence about his dominion and he does understand it because this person engage spiritual growth okay which produces fruit and what are the fruits the fruits are what his eternal power glory and honor okay which is the king's heavenly dominion that has effectual influence and productivity in this person's spiritual understanding and life and we can see that the effects of this productivity are sometimes in 100 times fold, sometimes in 60 times fold, sometimes in 30 times fold. All right. But ultimately, the most important thing is that growth and productivity is happening here from joy to patience to trustworthy character. To the hope of glory, to glory, honor, and power. All right. So the spiritual understanding of God's thoughts or intelligence in the person will produce so much effective eternal glory in the face of the wicked one and his wickedness, in the face of troubles, opposition, and distressing pressures, which comes because of the world received then your spiritual understanding builds character against worries which are the deceitfulness of riches not to be suffocated okay why because this is the lord's heavenly expanse that influences our living beyond the general understanding of everyone in this world praise god for his goodness it's amazing it's amazing to be able to understand god's word in the midst of troubles build joy build patience build character ultimately the hope of glory will crush all troubles all wickedness it will crush them all and you will stand out in eternal glory eternal beauty eternal honor and eternal power forever and ever amen to finalize this peter who was one of his disciples re-echoed this in his epistles to the church in second peter chapter one from verse eight which he said if these qualities are yours and are increasing they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Peter, having been a student of Christ for so long, reveals to us by the Spirit that with all these qualities increasingly in you, they will keep you effective and fruitful in the full knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. This is amazing. This is wonderful. You will never be unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So, this is it on the parable of the sower. Next episode, we will talk about the parable of the wheat and the weeds, the parable of the monster seed and the yeast the parable of a treasure and a pair, and so much more to come as we go on in scriptural understanding. All of these full clips on YouTube only remain ever blessed. This is the conscious being.